Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. I had a dream last night and I was telling a couple friends about it. I thought I'd just make a quick video too. In the dream, I was talking to a girl who'd really struggled with anorexia in her past. And she ended up with a man that really struggled with pornography and lust. And I was talking to her in the dream about the fate of Karen Carpenter. And I was, I was telling her that there's a whole difference between the outward kingdom and the inward kingdom. It's the difference between Cain and Abel. <clears throat> and I quoted the scripture that sin is crouching, kneeling down at your door. Sin is a he. Sin is kneeling down at your door but you must master him or you'll kneel down at the wrong door too. the outward world, you know, the flesh. Uh, there's something that came to me about the flesh too, but I don't remember right off the top of my head. I'm going to just talk for a few more minutes about it because I ended up having a conversation with a couple of friends too, where I was telling them the dream and we were talking about bitterness in particular because what was Cain's problem? It was a lot like Eve's problem after she talked to Satan. Bitter, bitterness. The bitterness that's described in Hebrews 12 is the only problem in our soul. You know, Satan himself fed Eve a big plate of bitterness and she ate it down with words. And she went and gave those words to Adam to eat her bitter words. We're being deprived. We don't have what we need. God's a loser. He's not doing what's right. We should be, we should decide to be boss babies ourselves and decide what's good and evil. And because we were made in the image of God, we were made to not live without God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing because he didn't make us to live without him. And so we were talking about what actually denying the Holy Ghost is, is forfeiting grace. And it's forfeiting God's government for the government of self and Satan, because self and Satan selfishness, self gratification in, in a bad way is what actually we need to be forgiven for for being selfish, right? And anybody that hasn't come to that place yet in their life is still kind of in a fall. Jesus came for the fall and the rise of many. And even, even when you look back into the garden, if Jesus was really with God and he, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are three in one, Jesus is like the word of God. It talks about that in first John. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the living word of spirit and life. He's the mouth. He's the voice. He's the face of God. That's what he, he said. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. And that's why I put that picture and I'll probably put that picture up again. If you've seen me, you've seen the face of God. Even with the children of, of, in the wilderness, it says they all drank that same spiritual drink. They all ate from that same spiritual meat. The rock was Christ. It, it talks about Christ being in the desert with the children of Israel. So God made internally a government inside of us to hear his voice and do it, right? And life isn't very easy when you deny God's voice. And I was telling my friends that I, I talked to a couple other friends yesterday about how easy it was for them to blow off the grace, blow off. What is God's government? It's the government and the kingdom of light to exist in that makes us light in the darkness. So when we grieve and deny and resist the third part of God, that lives inside of us, check off his voice that says, gives us that little thought, I should do this, I should do that. 
I should say this, I should go and do this. We're actually forfeiting the grace that could be ours. And Job, it puts it this way, those that deny things falsely, deny that little voice falsely, feed on the winds. In a land that's trodden, they travel thirsty and gain nothing. So you look at somebody like Karen Carpenter, and really this woman I was talking to in my dream is very much like my own daughter. I mean, and I, I love her like she's my own flesh and blood. She is a jewel. And you know what's so cool about some of my friends is digging and dunging their trees all these years. That's what it says. If you, if you dig and dung the tree, which is somebody's soul, you know, you'll, you, you'll get to eat the fruit thereof. I mean, there's women in my life now that are actually throwing fruit at me, and it is unbelievably powerful and cool. And you know, one thing that I've never allowed myself to do is get bitter. I, I saw the fate of the bitter soul, and yeah, it just about caused me to burn my house down with my children in it. So I kind of get why people get depressed, why they get angry and bitter, and why they live offended. Because when you shut up that government inside of you, it's the only other government you can go into is the kingdom of darkness. And Satan's desire is for us to get us to shut out the kingdom of heaven in our own soul, God's voice. And my sheep hear my voice and they follow it. And there's great grace upon the life of people that hear God's voice and do it. I put up a little TV show where Gene talks about that. And I hope you take the time to listen to it because it's really powerful. I'm going to end this now with a little prayer. Father, I pray that your government would come. Holy, holy is your name. And we're called to follow peace and holiness with all men. Because if we do that, we'll see your salvation. That's your promise. If we follow peace and holiness with men, it's what Cain didn't do and Abel did do. It's what Eve didn't do and talked Abel out of doing, I mean, Adam out of doing. So Father in heaven, Father who is the brains of God Almighty, who's holy, whose name is holy, let your kingdom, your government come in the face of your son who spoke the words of life, spirit and truth. May your government come in our life so we can actually do your will, which is in our highest good and the highest good of everybody around us. Give us understanding to the wiles of the devil to get us bitter, to get us to grieve, to deny, to resist the government you put inside of us and be bitter and unforgiving instead and be unforgiving towards what we want to be forgiven for. Help us from that fate, Lord, for the sake of your kingdom and your power and your glory that we could lift you up and draw all men unto you. Amen.